Hello everyone, today we have a fascinating projectile to test out called the Coleoptera, or Beetle, if you speak English. A viewer named Heinz, yes, same as the name of the ketchup, suggested this to us and Sartal took up the responsibility of making this happen. Sar fired up his small lathe and fabricated seven of these beautiful little prototypes for us to test out. These are constructed out of aluminum, also known as aluminium, and brass, also known as brassium. The design is based off the 1950s French aircraft, a really weird aircraft called the Coleoptère. The Coleoptère was a test aircraft that was designed to take off vertically and land vertically. It had to been absolutely terrifying to try to land this goofy thing. The aircraft was transported around on a special trailer with a hydraulic tilting mechanism that would set it on the ground right before it would launch. And then it would come back and land on its little shopping cart wheels uh, located on the back. Surprisingly, no test pilots were killed during the test of this unusual plane. Although it did catch fire, a pilot was injured, and they eventually scrapped it. It was just an idea that was just a little bit ahead of its time. The French did a good job of trying though. The Coleopter projectile has this extended inlet spike and these three internal fins. One of the concerns I have is launching this thing at supersonic speeds without it crushing under its own weight. It's kind of fragile looking. It does have a slightly forward center of gravity, but is that the right center of gravity? Well, we'll find out. Now the inlet spike, something that you would see on like the SR-71, was something I've wanted to test for a long time. Whether or not we can redirect the shock wave through the center of the projectile. The hydrodynamic test gives us an idea how the projectile might fly in a supersonic environment. I put a little bit of red dye on the tip of the inlet spike and as you can see we do have flow through the center of it. Now this was dropped at a slight angle and it seemed to be correcting itself and starting to fly straight again. The next test looked even more promising. This was done with zero angle straight down and it showed excellent stability. This also shows us why it's so important to launch it as straight as possible right out of the barrel. You can see that these were made sub-caliber, in other words, smaller than the inside of the barrel by design. If we left these just the way they were, they'd come out of the barrel at an unpredictable angle. We don't know where they'd go, and they could possibly cause it to start yawing and tumbling. With around 10,000 PSI pushing on this thing in a split second, we don't have a lot of surface area that to really work with here. So Saul made this wooden plug to spread the load out evenly across the back of the projectile. Then we slip it into what we call a sabo. I know it's got other pronunciations, but we call it a sabo. And now we have a pretty good fit in the barrel, but we still don't have very good support for the top half. So we'll put another sabo on top of it. Now the projectile is fully supported from one end to the other, and it should come out as straight as possible out of the barrel. We want to discard those upper sabos, so we just split that one in half, and as it comes out of the barrel, it'll separate like the fairings on Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket. Our coleopter is now fully supported from one end to the other, and when we fit it into the barrel, we now have an interference fit by just a few thousandths of an inch. The plastic will give, but it would still take a steel rod and a hammer to drive it down the barrel. The entire assembly, including an X-12X gas seal, fits into this 3-inch hole with little room to spare, and it was glued in place. Okay. Wow! Very little recoil. Yeah. The shell did not exist. just a little high, 12 o'clock on that blue dot. Okay. We had good sabo separation. Uh, the wood didn't break, the projectile didn't break, and it was flying nice and straight, and then it started yawing really bad. And ultimately it hit our soft Kevlar body armor sideways, like a pancake. I was hoping to reuse this one for another test, but it hit with so much force that it just collapsed on itself. Even left uh, indentations of the Kevlar on the aluminum itself, just embossed it right on there. But I still learned a lot and I know my powder load is good and I could probably up it a little bit to get them to go a little faster. But we may need full rifling in order to achieve spin stabilization. We want these things flying straight. Welcome back Tau Flater folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you today to bring you a cool 12 gauge shotgun slug. If you're not here to party, don't bother coming knocking at our door. 
Hey, today we have a unique round. By now you've already seen it on Jeff's tabletop, but this I've one- I've already is... talked about it. Exactly. Okay. So I'm not gonna talk I went into about detail, it. a lot of detail, how, kind of the stuff I never talk about normally, you know, how to make, you know, you can't just throw anything in a shotgun. You can't? You, there's a precision way of doing it, and that's what we're trying to do here. But people tell us to shoot rebar and Vienna sausages and icicles and-, and, and... Uh, <laughs> end mills and all kinds Everything. of stuff. It's like, you realize that's going to destroy the barrel, barrel right? Okay. But in case you tapped on the right side of your screen and skipped through Jeff's tabletop, this is called the coleopter. Hey, you got it right. I practiced that. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know that word. A French design. So uh, it probably gives up about halfway down to the target. Um, this coleopter <laughs> design was made by Sar Tall. You've seen some of his stuff before. Sar comes to us from Israel. He sends these things over to us. Sar is actually best known for making <laughs> some of the GD best candy on this planet. Sar, if you're watching this, he'll I've watch it. I've never tasted anything like this. It's crazy. Yeah. Sar makes really. I think really... this is a hobby for him. I think. Well, he ought to go into Spice business. Spice candies. He ought to go into business. You could advertise for him because this is some of the best stuff on the planet. Yeah, very unique flavors, all natural. Probably made out of cocaine or something because <laughs> it makes you want more. It does. So the coleopter, a little uh, brass cylinder in a... No, aluminum al or aluminum if you're in al aluminum parts cylinder. of Europe. Looks like an ink pen in a, little, uh, <laughs> in a little cylinder. We don't need to go into too much detail about this. We are gonna try it today though in kind of a special thing. Check this out. You guys might recognize this shotgun. We needed to shoot these coleopter rounds out of a rifled barrel. I've got a rifled barrel, so does Jeff. However, this is the late great Danny's rifled barrel Mossberg. So his family thought it would be very cool if we did some of our rifled barrel testing out of this Mossberg with his Bushnell, his shotgun, unfortunately my aim, <laughs> but hopefully maybe the shotgun can fix me. Right, Eric Hill? <laughs> All right, we're gonna give it a try. These coleopters out of Danny's gun. This one's for Danny. Let's give it a try. At Cabbage Holio. Whoa, low and right. 1465. Ooh, it's supersonic. Whoa. Now in real time, it appeared that we just had an inaccurate projectile. It hit the target, but a lot more than that is going on, as we can see with the footage from the Kronos high-speed camera. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Now one of my concerns was the fragility of these projectiles, the possibility that they'd break up from the nearly 10,000 G's of acceleration. The aluminum tube took off by itself, traveling around 1,000 miles per hour, but the internal fins and inlet spike assembly was stripped out of it from all that force and flew much slower than that. Let's hope that this particular sample was just weak for some reason, and the rest of the test will be a little more successful than this. And heck, it wouldn't be a Tau Flare Mouse video if everything was perfect too, right? Something always goes wrong. Okay, so we're gonna try this one. This one is jam-packed full of glitter. <laughs> no one knows why, there doesn't have to be a reason, it's just science. Uh, Jeff, pack this one full of glitter. Glitter makes everything better, just like rifling. Glitter makes shotgun rounds better, makes strippers better. <laughs> Gary, glitter is better with glitter, so. Let's give this a try here in the old rifled barrel. And uh, if we don't have better luck with the rifled barrel, we're gonna revert over to smooth and see if we, <laughs> if something's going completely wrong. This ain't here. looking good for the first shot. <laughs> All right, Danny, be with us. Okay, test two, I'm ready. All right, on the nose of the troll. Oh, I saw glitter. Yeah, I think it hit high on the jug. Yeah, Look up yeah it hit the very top of it. So from a rifled barrel, shooting at some troll bait, we came up here and we found this water jug all trenched out here. A nice little slice right across the top of it, however it didn't lose any fluid. Jeff and I went down range there at the safety berm. Over on the right side of the safety berm, Jeff found a little cylinder, a little aluminum cylinder. I had taken a right turn at Tel Aviv and he stumbled across this little uh, aluminum That's, fin section. That was inside and then... We found the little Sabo pieces between here and the safety berm. And then as we're sitting here talking about it, I looked down and we found the, almost looks like an ink pin. Yeah, the brass, ink pin. the brass nose, the inlet 
nose. So, oops, I just oh, dropped now you props lost it. in the ground. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was going to show you how this fits in there. He just built them to snap in there like that. I can't get it into the cylinder right now, but it was inserted yeah, into the cylinder. I was hoping. And that was my biggest fear that they were going to break apart from the G-Shock, which happens a lot. I mean, it's remember, it's over 10,000 Gs of acceleration. Ooh, that's a lot of Gs. It's like hitting a golf ball with a 500 mile an hour uh, golf club. <laughs> that's a fast golf club. Yeah. Um, you guys probably didn't know this, but G-Shock was actually my exotic dancer name. <laughs> I used to work stage three down at uh, down at an all male review. Oh my god! It wasn't pretty, and we went out of business. But um, anyway, let's give them a try. We're gonna try another one out of the rifled barrel, and then and if, then, uh, if and all else fails, we're gonna <laughs> switch, switch over, I, I, I switch over to smooth. There's that's essentially a smooth barrel right there. Yeah. Well, the good news is the projectile didn't break as we see it come into focus here, but the wooden plug was stuck to the back of it. The semi-stable projectile then impacts the jug, which has enough force to tear the projectile into pieces. This is at least a slight improvement over test number one. We saw different results this time. Let's hope that things improve because the velocity and powder load just gets higher and higher after this. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go on the nose. Hey. Here we go. Hey. There we go. The projectile didn't break, the wooden plug didn't stick to it, and we had, eh, a little better accuracy. But best of all, we had some glitter trailing out of the back of it. There's nothing really holding the glitter in there. You'd think it would all just dump out right away, but it sort of just meters out along the way. Things are starting to look a lot better, and there's a little bit of hope for these things still. Okay, let's see if smoothbore makes things better. <laughs> and a 20% increase in powder. <laughs> That's like one-fifth more powder almost. I know. All it's right. getting very dark here, but I think the Kronos is going to do okay, I think. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. I'm going to aim for the middle top shaving cream. Okay. <laughs> Nothing exploded. <laughs> I Not think it went through the table. Something down. Using the smooth bore, we no longer have spin stabilization, and, well, the slug at least didn't break apart this time. But I'm going to have to explain to my wife why there's a big hole in her yard sale table. That's the hard part. That's a big target for 10 yards too, by the way. Still can't manage to hit it. I know, what's wrong with you? I know. It just keeps getting darker. I keep having to open my iris up. Dang it. I think it's a swarm of locusts descending upon us. I know, I know. Look, there's a raven in the top of that oak tree. <laughs> That's an omen. Okay, I'm ready. Alright, here we go. There we go. 1438. Okay. There we went back to the full rifle barrel. Things did not improve though. The thing broke apart and multiple pieces went down range. It was just a miracle that the table wasn't hit this time. We have one more to test and we're, this time we're gonna bet all our money on this shot. All right, we're gonna cap it off with a super duper coleocopter, colon copter? Coleopter. Coleopter. Coleopter, monsieur, oui. s'il vous plaît. That's so, all the French I know. This one's got 20% more powder, 20% more glitter, 20% more range, because check it out. Yeah. We moved Brandon, Doug's cousin, <laughs> back to 30 yards. 10 <laughs> yards, what? We weren't hitting anything at 10 <laughs> yards. So if you're not hitting anything at 10 yards, what do you do? You move them out to 30 yards. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe this acts like an RPG. You got to take that little paper out, out of there because that's what's holding the glitter in yeah you want to save that you can reuse that <laughs> I, I think i will i need keep for my bunghole <laughs> who does that remind you of um maybe these are like an rpg in that they stabilize <laughs> at 30 yards where 10 yards they're just all cattywampus that's this it got glitter falling no 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 don't waste it well, it's, 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 you know how expensive glitter is these days i know i had to sit down and hand shave uh, <laughs> some glitter it's so pricey yeah however we're going to defile danny's shotgun by putting purple glitter in it sorry danny and 
Let's give it a try. One more, one last shot out of the rifled barrel. Okay. All right. Let's give it a try. At Brandon. Hey, it worked. It hit. <laughs> we just need more distance. Or Twitter. <laughs> I can't believe you hit it. Me neither. 30 yards, we increased, we tripled the distance. <laughs> All of a sudden, these things are semi-accurate. So, sorry, Tall, we should have been shooting at 30 yards the whole time. I came down here, first thing I see is a big old giant puddle of glitter here. Is a dry area of glitter called a puddle. And, look at that. Woo! So that, it, we also found right here a bunch of little wood shards, all collected right there. So that's kind of cool. It dropped all of its yeah, pieces. Yeah, I was worried that wood wouldn't be strong enough. Swing on around here to the backside. Oh, okay. Oh. Says OG. Check this out. This is obviously where it hit. It made a little hole right here where it punched in there. It tried to come out the back. The little, uh, the little arrow spike ink thing. pin looking piece tried to poke out the back. Did not make it through. But we found glitter everywhere. And then sitting right there at the base of the table, there is your round. Still, Still with glitter. It's not wet. No, you know what it is? It's a hydrosonic shocker. What'd you call it? Hydrosonic. Hydro, well, the, the shock wave just yeah. holds it in there. And it, and it hit nose first. It's still the shock waves holding it in and there. You see the wood in there? So the wood was getting shoved in there. When you should. It apple cored it, like an apple core. <laughs> like an apple core. Yeah. See? Yep. So sh what you're saying is you shove your wood in there <laughs> and then the glitter, okay. You mean something like that. So, that's pretty cool though. Almost all the pieces are there except for that little the spike. spike. I don't know where the spike is. We'll step on it out here in a minute. We'll I'll drive it. over it with my truck and get a right. flat. It'll go right up through the tire. Yeah, that's how it works. Hey, anyway. I found it. One thing we didn't know was what happened to that brass spike. The surprising thing here is that thing penetrated this military level Kevlar vest. And this vest is considerably thicker than a police issue vest. But somehow we didn't see that little hole in the back and that proves, well, does it prove it? That it went through? Well, let's look at the high speed footage and see what happened. Now, both Greg and I were amazed that he was able to hit this target because we were not having much luck with these things up till this point. And it was just dumb luck that this thing worked. But the, the unexpected thing is that brass pin penetrated that vest and we could see it shooting out the back. Let's watch that again. And that pin lost very little velocity after passing through that thick Kevlar vest through the dummy. And it just kept on going to the next county for... Kind of a happy ending to a, um, to a otherwise mediocre test. If that's what you're here for, <laughs> mediocrity in a shotgun. So we appreciate you guys stopping by. Sar tall, these things were fun nonetheless. Might not have been laser accurate, but they were fun to shoot, fun to experiment with, and even better, candy. bag of candy over there was friggin' un unbelievable. So <laughs> that's good stuff. You guys need to hit up SAR. Anyway, we thank you guys for stopping by. I do want to send you out with this message. This comes from Danny. He wants everybody to donate blood. So if you would, please do us a favor and head out and uh, donate blood, or he also specially requested platelets. Yeah. So if it's something you can do, blood or platelets, uh, we don't want to compromise your health, obviously. But if you're able to do it, uh, I get 15 calls every week. Please stop by the Central California Blood Bank and give us some of your blood. So um, please do that for Danny. We appreciate you guys coming out here for another video. And we'll see you on the next one. OG and Jeff out. And one final thing while I have you here. Uh, a few weeks ago, a channel called Zyla Foxland, yes, it's her real name, had built a bulletproof dress, and she asked us to help her test it out. Greg and I were more than happy to help him out. Now, Greg is a certified firearms instructor and first had to teach her and her friend Joe how to safely handle firearms in any environment, including a film set. I hope you'll check out her video. There's actually some footage of me in there, too, if you're curious what I look like. Hey! A little different. Woo! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> it gets you, and then to. Go ahead and pump. Hey! hey.